Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers. Constantly keeping in mind your work of faith and labor of love and perseverance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Knowing, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, His choice of you. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sakes. You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word during great affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place the news of your faith toward God has gone out, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves report about us as to the kind of reception we had with you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath to come. For you yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our reception among you was not in vain. But after we had already suffered and been treated abusively in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not intending to please people, but to please God, who examines our hearts. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is our witness. Nor did we seek honor from people, either from you or from others, though we could have asserted our authority as apostles of Christ. But we proved to be gentle among you. As a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. In the same way we had a fond affection for you and were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you have become very dear to us. For you recall, brothers and sisters, our labor and hardship, it was by working night and day so as not to be a burden to any of you, that we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how devoutly and rightly and blamelessly we behaved toward you believers. Just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging and imploring each one of you as a father would his own children, so that you would walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. For this reason we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of mere men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which also is at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, for you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out. They are not pleasing to God, but hostile to all people, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved, with the result that they always reach the limit of their sins. But wrath has come upon them fully. But we, brothers and sisters, having been orphaned from you by absence for a short while in person, not in spirit were all the more eager with great desire to see your face. For we wanted to come to you I, Paul, more than once and Satan hindered us. For who is our hope, or joy, or crown of pride, in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming. Or is it not indeed you? For you are our glory and joy. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it best to be left behind, alone at Athens. And we sent Timothy, 
our brother and God's fellow worker in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you for the benefit of your faith, so that no one would be disturbed by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we have been destined for this. For even when we were with you, we kept telling you in advance that we were going to suffer affliction, and so it happened, as you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I also sent to find out about your faith, for fear that the tempter might have tempted you, and our labor would be for nothing. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and has brought us good news of your faith and love, and that you always think kindly of us, longing to see us just as we also long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and affliction we were comforted about you through your faith. For now we really live, if you stand firm in the Lord. For what thanks can we give to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice because of you before our God? As we keep praying most earnestly night and day that we may see your faces, and may complete what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself, and our Lord Jesus, direct our way to you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow in love for one another, and for all people, just as we also do for you. So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Finally then, brothers and sisters, we request and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you received instruction from us as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel even more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God. And that no one violate the rights and take advantage of his brother or sister in the matter, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things, just as we also told you previously and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in sanctification. Therefore, the one who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now as to the love of the brothers and sisters, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, ten for indeed you practice it toward all the brothers and sisters who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers and sisters, to excel even more. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business and work with your hands, just as we instructed you. So that you will behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as indeed the rest of mankind do, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead, so also God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For we say this to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now as to the periods and times, brothers and sisters, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord is coming just like a thief in the night. While they are saying, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that the day would overtake you like a thief. 
for you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then, let's not sleep as others do, but let's be alert and sober. 7 For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let's be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you also are doing. But we ask you, brothers and sisters, to recognize those who diligently labor among you and are in leadership over you in the Lord, and give you instruction. And that you regard them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brothers and sisters, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek what is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not utterly reject prophecies. But examine everything, hold firmly to that which is good, Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I put you under oath by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.